guys. Pretty good. How are you? Good. See. Welcome to the millet exhibit. Yes, thank you, Becky. Um, so we've got, so we're all about millet, and mostly, specifically, we're about reconnecting with ancient grains that we used to eat, mm -hmm. but that just, we just don't eat anymore. So um, we've got lots of different ways for you to experience millet. We've got recipe cards. Each one's mm -hmm. different that you're welcome to take. We've got millet seeds that you're welcome to take, lots of different varieties, so you could take and plant in your home. Okay. We've got seeds, or millet for you to take and cook with in these little baggies down here, and information about us oh and the project and what we're doing. I did that wrong. Um, and then if you move down the tables, we've got um, one table with two Tuesday right here and she's actually doing her PhD work on millet and specifically mm -hmm. which microbes in the soil are most beneficial for millet um, and for drought tolerance and then we've got Mai who's a farmer one of our we have several farmers throughout the state who are researching um, what the best microclimates are for millet and the best watering schemes and how much fertilizer they need and how little fertilizer they need um, and then we've got also, millet beer and millet food, burgers, yeah, and lots of different stuff to try. Just Thank you, Becky. Red clover. So the only thing we ask is that people stay in, within the caution tape because there are other, there's other research going on and we don't want to ruin any, anybody's data that they've been collecting for done. I'll just start off with the definition of millet. Everybody has their own definition of millet, but the, the one that's widely known is that millet is just a alternative small ancient grain it's not corn wheat and rice which dominates 90 percent of all grains in america so we're trying to tap into this all these thousands of other grains that we just call millets uh, because you if you have if you're growing more types of different plants you're less likely to be invaded by a pathogen and wipe out your whole food source and you're also going to be getting more uh, nutrition in your diet because one plant will make different nutrients that another plant has. So by spreading the love, so to speak, and having different grains in your cereals, in your bread, all the delicious things you tried today, you're not just getting nutrition from corn, wheat, and rice. A good thing about millets is that when you have so many different varietals, varietals to choose from, or species to choose from, you can start to play with some crops do better than others at using water. And corn is not one of those. Corn uses tons of water. And in California, we're looking at, you know, drought problems. So millets are coming in at the perfect time. And so here we have three watering schemes. You have full water, semi-drought, and drought. Three rows, three rows, three rows plus plastic. So don't look at the plastic. We're not going to count the plastic because that's cheating. It's keeping all the water inside the soil. And most farmers don't have tons and tons and tons of plastic to just cover their fields with. So this is the real world condition with no plastic. Semi-drought has been watered for the first nine weeks of its life, once a week, and then turned off completely. And the, the full drought was watered for the first six weeks of its life, once a week, and then turned off. So when they were about this tall, they haven't had any water. That's the last three rows. We'll walk back on, on the drought and we'll go through in the a lot fatter and larger. This is called a tip grain 102. And this is also a pearl millet, but the USDA has created a special variety that's improved yield. Yeah, if it's for food and stuff, it's not for forage. These right here, this is a finger millet that we started growing this year. And it's grown primarily in Africa. I don't know of any commercial growers in the US. And it was eaten really bad by the turkeys when we planted it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can see why it's called finger millet, because it kind of looks like a little hand with little fingers coming up, and it grows pretty tall with nice finger-looking seed heads. Um, but we won't be able to get any data out of this because of the turkeys, but I still think it's cool to look at. Yeah. Did it make the smallest grains in the world? So it has some ground. And so they use this to make this bread called Indira, which we have apple of. You can like run your hand up. I think corn is, or corn is a, a lot older. And that's why it's sweeter? 
yeah, it worked. And it, it didn't uh, make any scene, so it's super sweet right now. Uh, yeah. Did you want to try one? Are you good? Okay. Martin, could you talk this? Yep. 